Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at replacing the screen on a Dell Latitude 3540 laptop. So first of all, as pretty standard, we need to release the battery, so push this one over and then lift here and lever out the battery from the back of the laptop. Now next up we have an SD card which has already been removed but would normally live in the front here. Um, next the access panel needs to come off. So this is two screws on the bottom of the laptop. These appear to be retained in the panel so don't actually come out. So that will lift the panel as we unscrew it and then the pry tool along here should just help to release the panel from the laptop. So if we work along that bottom edge, this is just to unclip the panel and release it. Now next up we want to just unclip, there's a single memory module in here. Release that with the two pins on it. Now next up we just need to release the hard drive. So we have two screws here. By undoing those, we should now be able to push the hard drive along and then using this plastic tab here, can we lift it? by using the pry tool to give us a path for it to run along there. We should now be able to free the drive. And we can see actually because there's some extra padding put on because it's a thinner drive it made it a little trickier. So having removed that we also need to take out the optical drive. simply one screw and that slides out. Flip the laptop over and then along the top edge there are a number of little release mechanisms. Pushing these in and lifting the keyboard at the same time we should be able to free it from them. So if we run along under there, and then we lift the keyboard towards ourselves, slide it up. Before lifting we need to slide up to release the bottom tabs and then if we flick it over we can see the ribbon connector here, pull up on the little tab to release that. Next we need to remove the palm rest. So if we start on this top side we have a selection one, two, three, four, five screws here. So if we start by removing those, since we've already got the laptop this way up, These are a mixture of length, uh, length, so they're the same width, but some are slightly shorter than others. Get 
again these are various lengths so it is worth noting which came from where I am going to arrange these in roughly the order I'm removing them so that when it comes to reassembly I can put them back where they came from Turn over to free the remaining screws. So one here inside the chassis which we should have released, uh, or should we? No, that's not necessary. Yes it is. So with these removed, we should now be able to remove the palm rest. So again, if we take the pry tool, we should be able to get in between the palm rest and the chassis to release the tabs holding it down. We should be able to continue sliding around to release the tabs. Before we continue, an additional screw there that I missed. We may as well free these ribbon cables for the power connector and the touchpad. Continuing along this edge.
This now gives us access to the main board and um, the main sort of display assembly and the likes. So if we disconnect the wireless LAN antennas and unfortunately it looks like the motherboard does have to come out for this just because of the way the connectors are positioned. Let's see if that is actually the case. First of all, if we remove the wireless LAN card, unscrew there and lift that out. Next, if we remove this power connector, is that necessary? Nope, so the only thing coming down from this hinge is the wireless antennas, so let's unravel those. On this side we have the power connector and display cable. It may be possible to remove this without having to remove the motherboard. So if we pull this cable up, will it release with the motherboard in situ? Yes it will. So it looks like actually removing the, contrary to what the manual says, removing the main board is not necessary for this. We can do it with just a few screws here to lift out and that gives us access to the cooler and some other sections. But for what we need to do today, this isn't actually required. Instead, what I need to do is just release the hinges for the display assembly. Standing that upright will just make it a little easier to remove. And with that done, we simply lift the screen off as so. Now we just have the panel here with the hinges. So to start with we need to remove the hinge covers. To release the hinges what we can do is push in the pry tool and simply lift the hinge, uh, the hinge cover sorry, to release it. And the same on the other side. See having a soft pry tool helps. Um, if you have anything metal you do risk damaging the cables. So with that lifted we should now be able to pull it off. So that is the hinge covers removed. And then we should simply be able to release the bezel by running around edges and lifting. You see since the screen on this one is already broken we don't have to take too much care, we just don't want to damage the actual bezel. We get the pry tool. And by pushing this in, we should be able to unclip the surround.
going around. This should gradually release. From here we should to lift off the bezel. And this simply leaves us now with four screws around the outside of the screen. And by lifting this by the tabs which hold it down, we now have the panel removed and if we're careful and flip it over, we can peel back and disconnect the connector from it. Pulling this tape off, this gives us access to the connector and then by pulling here this should release the retention clip. And by pulling that, we have now removed the panel from the machine. Now obviously just to reassemble, reverse the process, and it should be a relatively simple task. I hope you found this video useful, and um, be sure to check out our other videos as well. We have lots of content on the channel, and if you find what we do helpful, hit the subscribe button.